Wow, I had no idea when I posted that video inviting you to submit a walk around of your vehicle, just how many videos we're gonna start flooding in. We received a ton already and it's only been 24 hours. So I've handpicked a few of those already and we'll do another video down the road that I think you're gonna find very interesting. We got a whole variety of off-road and overland vehicles. This is gonna be a lot of fun. Stay tuned. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad. And today in this video, we're gonna take a look at eight of your vehicles that you have submitted. These are everyday average guys vehicle builds very unique off-roading and overland themed vehicles. They're really cool. I think you're really gonna enjoy checking these out. I've had a blast going through all the video submissions. And look, if your video doesn't show up in this one, don't worry, we're gonna do this again. And if you haven't submitted a walk around of your vehicle, you can still submit that and then be considered for a future one. I had a lot of fun just putting this together. Uh, my wife even was over my shoulder. She's like, wow, that was really cool. Now, if you wanna submit your vehicle, I'll leave a link down below to a video that I did it talks about everything you need to do. All right, enough about me rambling. You guys want to check out these rigs. So let's dive into the first one. What's up everyone? My name is Clinton and this is my 1996 Jeep Cherokee XJ that I have fully built for overlanding and wheeling. Today we're going to do a walk around of all the modifications that I've done. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, let's go ahead and get started with the front. So I'm currently running a JCR Vanguard front bumper with a Smittybilt synthetic winch. I'm running truck light LED headlights with worn Epic shackles and just some hardware or auto part store LED cubes. And then on the front, one of the biggest things that I get asked is where did I get this hood? And this is a Baja Fiber Power Dome 10th Anniversary hood that I have from them. Awesome hood, uh, it gets a lot of visibility with this Jeep. But onto the notch flares. So these guys are notch custom X-Max flares. And these not only look awesome, they actually serve a huge benefit because you cut out actually a lot of the fender well to open that up quite a bit. And this gives me a lot of added clearance without having to run a huge lift. So I'm running a four and a half inch lift with 35s. These are 35 by 12 and a half by 15s. And these are mammoth 15 by eight wheels. I am also running power stop. You can see that drilled and slotted rotors back there. Phenomenal brakes to help break those big tires. And I am running a four and a half inch the four and a half inch lift is a Rubicon Express lift with Bilstein shocks. Love the lift kit, it's fantastic. The rear actually is a little different. I got custom leaf packs made to handle this, uh, the weight from all of the overlanding gear. It's a company in Grand Junction, Colorado. I can't think of the name, it's been a few years, sorry. Uh, all right, so rear bumper. Currently I don't have the tire carrier on, but this is a Smitty built rear bumper with a tire carrier. The tire carrier just is a little too much weight for with, with the tents and all my camping gear, so I usually pull it off when I'm overlanding. But I have a tire patch kit in case something happened on the trail and a compressor. So I am running the Tough Stuff Elite Tent. This is Tough Stuff Overland, and this is their five-person tent. So this is, the, as far as I know, the biggest tent on the market. I have me and my wife, two babies and two dogs. The dogs stay in the annex, but for all four of us out there, we have plenty of room, it's awesome. And to carry that on my roof, I am running the JCR Adventure Roof Rack Base. I have the basket, but I can't run it with the tent. And let's go around to this side. All right, so this is the Hog Hills Off-Road Gear 270 Batwing awning that I'm running. So this goes all the way around the car to the back side, and I'm still able to open the rear hatch with uh, camping. I usually have all my stuff in the back, so it's still accessible. Uh, that's the majority of the modifications, other than obviously I have a major list, but as far as cosmetic things, those are going to be the biggest. So 
I'm actually in the process of swapping fully built JK Rubicon axles and I'm going to 37s. Uh, hopefully it'll be done shortly. Other than that, this is my 1996 Jeep Cherokee and it's got 140,000 miles and this thing has been unbelievable to me. I bought it for $800. People literally do not believe me when I say that. It was sitting in a garage with a blown motor. I bought it for 800 bucks, bone stock, and I've been building it for two years. So I would say that this is probably the most budget-friendly build you could possibly do. I, yeah, I got a little lucky with how clean it is, but overall, this is your budget overland build. I like to call it a overland wheeler because I take it wheeling as well. So here it is. Thank you guys, have a great night. Wow, thank you, Clinton. That is an awesome build. It was an easy selection for this first video. You've done a great job. I love the hood, the fenders. It's just an awesome overland build. And that tent is massive, boy. You can easily fit a large family up there. So great job on that build, man. I look forward to seeing you out on the trail someday. All right, guys, let's dive in to the next one. You're gonna like this one. How's it going guys? Behind me is my 2013 Ford F350 and uh, I'm going to give you a small little tour. Let's get to it. So here she is. It's a 2013 Ford F350 Lariat trim. I bought it with 41,000 miles. Currently has 89,000 miles and that's within two years. So I've put a lot of miles on but I love it. So starting from the front, I've replaced all my lights with aftermarket products. I have two KC Cyclones and Ambers for my running lights new headlights, fog lights. Up top, I got the KC Apollo 6s. So I'm running BFG KM3s and a 35 inch. I don't have any lift. I'm waiting for my leveling kit to come in the mail. So up top, I have my roof rack with my awning and two boxes for recovery gear. The very first thing I bought for it was these all weather mats. I got these from Husky Liners. I love these things. They're perfectly shaped for the truck and they honestly, they keep my carpet really, really clean. So for my driver and passenger side door, both sides have the same gear. I got flashlights, a strap cutter, tourniquet, gloves, med kit. I got a headlamp down here and an umbrella because we never know how the weather here is. So if you hop into my dash, I have my phone mount, my GoPro mount, then I have my tablet that I use for uh, off-road navigation. And then if we go in the back seat, like I said, I have a one-year-old son, so he rides back here in comfort. And then up top, I have my patch collection that I love to keep growing. Uh, it's a nice little hobby and I like it and it makes my roof look good or the liner inside. So going towards the back, like I said, all the lights have been replaced, so I got aftermarket tail lights. I got my trash roof for when I go camping or small little trips, you know, take it out. So eight foot bed, I wanted a big truck so I can tow whatever I needed and haul what I want. So plans for the future, I wanna put a bed rack, I wanna get a rooftop tent. You know, I wanna, I wanna make this into the ultimate travel rig that'll fit my needs and uh, take me wherever I need to go. So, just a quick little video. I hope you enjoyed it. What an awesome full-size build truck and big points to you, man, for submitting it dirty because at least we know it's out there being used. I think it's a great build. One thing to point out that I should mention for everybody is did you see how easily accessible his tourniquet, his first aid gear was? That's something you should all take into consideration. How quickly can you get to your stuff? I really think that's an awesome build and I can't wait to see him with a rack and a rooftop tent on there. That's just going to be awesome. It's so cool to see full-size vehicles out there wheeling like that. Okay, here's another one of your submissions. My name is Chad Levang, Levang, and this is my 2005 Jeep Grand Cherokee 5.7 liter limited edition. I chose this vehicle because the distinct look that you can get with it with the different modifications. That being said, there's not very many modifications to do to them, and they're also di very difficult to find. One of the big providers, at least in the past, of modifications for this Jeep has been Jeep and Bial 
or 4X guard, and I've got a lot of different mods from that company on here. Let's start with the front. First thing in the front that you'll notice is the uh, the grill. I've got a grill insert by Impulse Fab, and it's the honeycomb grill insert. It's aluminum. You just cut out the old one and bolt in the new inserts. It adds a very unique look to it. Moving down, you can see I've got the uh, hidden winch. Got the hidden winch mount from uh, Rocky Road Off Road, and it's a it's. It can be a little bit of a difficult install, but uh, it's very neat and clean, and I like the look of it. As we continue to move down, you can see the 4X guard armor plate there in the front. Further down, you can see that it's got a super lift on it. It's actually a modified super lift in my case. I started out the Jeep with uh, just a stock Jeep Grand Cherokee. We moved to... Uh, old man emu suspension lift and ended up here with the modified super lift. Super lift comes with new steering knuckles, differential drop, it's got some extended uh, sway bar links both front and rear and in the rear it's got uh, some new lower control arms. The Jeep is an independent front suspension Jeep so putting a lift on it can be a little bit difficult. You can see the angle on the uh, CV joints it's not extreme in my case, but uh, much more than it would be extreme. I mentioned earlier that it's a modified super lift. What I did is I incorporated part of the old man emu lift components and, uh, and the super lift to get about six inches of additional lift out of it. When you do the lift, especially the modified side of it, you have to have some different upper control arms, otherwise the ball joint angle gets pretty extreme. You can see here I got these ball joint or these uh, upper control arms from Jeep and by Al or 4X Guard. I also got the rock sliders from 4X Guard, Jeep and by Al. They're no longer producing them, they're focusing primarily on their upper control arms. The wheels are JK takeoffs with 35s. Initially, I had some two 65 17s on them, and when I went to the four or to the uh, super lift, I went with some 35s. So, move to the rear. There's not a lot of clearance for that 35 in the rear, and most of that's because it is a short arm instead of a long arm kit. If I had a long arm kit on it, I could get those wheels more centered, but uh, once it gets flexed out with the short arm kit, those wheels pretty much center up in the uh, wheel well. Moving to the rear of the vehicle. Not many modifications on the rear. Got a hitch that I like the look of. I did put a new exhaust on it. I cut out the uh, muffler and the resonator and I've got a Magnaflow muffler on it now instead of the uh, factory suitcase size muffler. Again, it is the 5.7 liter limited edition and so it comes with um, all wheel drive but you can go into four low with it and in four low the differentials will lock up almost completely. They're electronic limited slip differentials. It's kind of the poor man's locker. Anyway, that's my uh, 2005 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Thanks for listening. Oh, right on. I love that WK. Thank you, Chad, for your submission. I think those Grand Cherokees are a little underrated because if you go on Craigslist, you can find them relatively cheap. And to be able to do something like that with it to make it that capable, I mean, look, putting a six inch lift on there is a lot of work, but that thing is going to take him on some great adventures. Something to consider. What an awesome submission. Okay, let's uh, take a look at this next one. You guys are going to love this one. This one was my wife's favorite. Hello Brad, my name is Timmy up in Girdwood, Alaska and thank you for connecting everyone despite the social distancing thing right now. It's a great idea you had. Um, this is my 1996 Ford F-350 Power Stroke Diesel with a Traben, a truck cabin that I built for the back of it. So yeah, let's check it out. Um, it's got a 6 inch lift, airbags, 35 inch tires. I've got a custom aluminum bull bar on the front with a 12,000 pound winch. I had a buddy weld up, works awesome. It's gotten me out of trouble several times. The inside is super cozy. RV seats, basically gauges, so you know what's going on. On the roof, I've got a uh, rocket box that holds my skis and uh, 
paddling gear and uh, kayaks, all that kind of stuff, bikes. Um, and also 100 watts of solar up in the roof. Um, the camper, I all custom built. I came up with the idea in my head. Turned out awesome, it's super sturdy. Uh, yes, it stands up to abuse great um, so far. Um, it's all spray foamed, thermoplastic windows. And here's the back porch, everyone's favorite part. Um, every now and then I'll get some mail or note in there. There's nothing in there today. Um, a stair is I built these because I hate those truck camper scissor steps. So latch there, folds down super easy. Um, left side, both of these are seats. Under the left seat, propane and battery. Right seat is firewood and a battery charger. Good little bird feeder here. And you can totally stand up on the porch easy. Six foot three, so it's kind of nice. So uh, let's go inside. Let's hit light. And get one more. And here's the interior. Here we go. So there are two full-size six foot long couches in here. Um, the couch on the left side over here turns into a bed instantly, just like that. Pretty sweet. It's a jackknife sofa. And to put it back, same thing, goes right back. So you can sleep three people in here if you need to. Um, on the left side, you've got a wood stove, Kimberly wood stove. This thing is awesome. Keeps it super cozy in here. Below that, I've got my bathroom, which is awesome having a bathroom in your home, in your ride. Uh, the lefts, or the uh, right side over here, uh, I've got a propane furnace to heat up the camper quickly with a thermostat in the wall. And full range oven right here, pretty nice. Um, instead of doing a whole bunch of mechanical electric stuff, I wanted simple, I wanted to keep it simple in here. So I just did a little pump sink or a pump faucet right there. Six gallons of fresh water, super easy to fill up. Uh, fantastic fan to keep it ventilated and battery charge controller. So I can see how my battery's doing. It's all powered by that 100 watts of solar. Um, I've got two charging stations I built. Uh, yeah. These thermoplastic windows are awesome. Uh, they make them, or Dometic makes them overseas. So yeah, those are pretty nice and insulated. And for storage, I've uh, just got underfloor storage down here. The storage all built in on the left side and storage under this couch as well, all the way down the side. And I also have a Dometic CC40, just a battery powered uh, fridge freezer. This thing is awesome. Keeps, uh, holds a lot of food and yeah, that's pretty much it. So hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, yeah, keep sharing content and uh, keeping our minds busy during these times. All right, cheers everyone. Man, Timmy, my mind is blown, man. That is such an awesome Traven. I love it. The coolest Traven I've ever seen for sure. Look, there's a lot of work, attention to detail, craftsmanship that you put into that thing. It is really, really nice. I hope that we're able to make it up to Alaska this year. And if we do, I'm gonna reach out and see if there's a way to connect because I would love to see that thing in person. Great job. Thank you for your submission. All right, let's check out the next vehicle you guys submitted. I'm Jeffrey, and this is my 1999 Jeep Wrangler TJ that's been modified to be great on the trails around Seattle, but also be great as a daily driver. On the front of the Jeep, I've got a Smitty-built tube bumper and some rough country diff and steering box guards. Under the sides, I've made some custom rock sliders that bolt into the factory running board mounts and are supported by the body when under load. The rear of the Jeep retains its stock bumper with the end caps removed. Mounted to the bumper is the high lift 4x rack system with a 36 inch jack. Below all that I have a class 2 towing shackle in the factory hitch. The tailgate has a rugged ridge heavy duty hinge for the bigger tire. The top I have is a best top Trek top NX slant back soft top. In the engine bay, I have the legendary 4 liter that exhausts through a Banks monster system. Under the Jeep, I have a 2.5 inch rough country lift kit and manual sway bar disconnect. 
I'm running 15 inch American racing wheels with 32 inch KO2s. It has no lockers and isn't re-geared, but I always carry a voodoo recovery rope, high lift winch kit, and high lift jack foot for especially sticky situations. On the inside, I have the rugged ridge sill guards and dash topper along with a premium sound system and Quadratech rubber floor mats. I also rock the AX15 five-speed manual. I love this thing. It's easy to get in and out of and easy to fit anywhere on the road or off of it. It takes me anywhere I want to go. Right on, Jeffrey. Thank you for your submission. I love the TJ. Totally a clean look, and I like that you did some of the fabrication on some of those components yourself. Very cool. You know, my son Jordan and I have been paying close attention to TJ builds, and we really like yours. All right. The next one you guys are going to really enjoy, especially you Toyota lovers out there. What up, everyone? This is Joshua, and this is my 2018 Toyota Land Cruiser, and I'm going to show you my vehicle. I have a Trackbox Alpha Dual System. And this is a ARB fridge freezer. I think it's 80 or 82 liters. It doesn't use that much electricity. It's quite good. And the drawer system is really convenient. I can just, when I need it, just pull the drawer out, get whatever I need without going through everything. So I usually store my my cookware under the under this drawer. And this is a Cook Partner 22 stove. It's quite convenient. And the design is very sleek. I like it a lot. So I usually put my stove right here with an aux station extended from the drawer. And I can just just uh, connect the piping for, for the gas for the gas. And it works quite well. It's pretty sturdy. So to retract the drawer is quite easy. You just press the latch and push it in. You just do that easily. And here I have a, I think 3000 watts inverter. Some of the recovery gears are behind this and also an emergency kit. And right here I have a, on the back I have a K-Mall rear bar from, from Australia and uh spirit spirit tire carrier i have my max tracks recovery boards uh backed into the backs i think they are from blue ridge blue ridge overland and they work pretty well under the bumper i have a i have a 40 gallons auxiliary tank so here are a couple of the flags for this to represent the states that I have taken this car to. I used to live in Seattle, used to go to school there, and that's where I got the car in Seattle, and then have been to Oregon, California, and Nevada. And here the, the wheels are 17 inches, Rock Warrior. Uh, from Toyota and also uh, BF Goodrich KO2. I think the dimensions are 285, 70, 17. And here is the, the uh, ARB side steps, looks very clean. And to the front of the vehicle, I have a, I have a custom made bracket for hidden winch and it mounts the winch perfectly. I just had to cut the front bumper a little bit. Under the hood, as you can see, it's quite dirty, but that's all the point of having a Toyota. It doesn't really matter, that's the least of my concern. I have an ARB twin air compressor. It fills up air very quickly, and I'm pretty happy with it. And this is the main battery with a couple of the accessory and also the battery isolator hooked to it. And this is a V8 5.7 liters. And here's my secondary battery from Odyssey battery and I have my inverters connected to this and also here's my uh, close look at the winch it's 9.5 XPS it has synthetic rope so on top of the vehicle I have a iCampers SkyCam 2.0 it sleeps four people tightly but three comfortably For suspension, I have a BP51 from ARB 
and I just changed the upper control on to to get get the alignment back to factory specs. 40 plus 25 gallons of fuel I can go about roughly more than 600 miles so that really solved the problem of range since it is a V8 it has a lot of fuel consumption and so I can use the jerry can holder just mainly for water I usually carry two each with 20 liters so I have 40 liters of water that's sufficient for a trip like for three or four days even washing dishes with it Wow, what a great build. That thing is awesome. You've done a great job with it. What I really like about it is 40 gallon gas tank, 600 mile range, and it's a V8. Man, I can only dream to be able to have something like that. That's awesome. Congratulations on your build. I know you guys are going to have some great adventures. Okay, this next one, I'm already getting cold looking at it. Tim coming at you from Denver, Colorado, bringing you my 2000 Jeep Wrangler. Uh, I've done everything myself, rattle canned it. Um, you know, when you hit a tree, you just pull out some spray paint and touch it up. Running Metal Cloak, a three and a half inch short arm. Uh, Fox shocks all the way around, Metal Cloak Stinger, Warren Winch. Uh, no sway bars. Um, <laughs> got the high lift, some just some cheap old off road lights. Uh, running 35 inch uh, BFG KM2s. And I'm also running. Rusty's three-quarter or three-quarter ton offset steering. Um, not a huge fan of that, but that's all right. I'm actually on my third motor now. Uh, first one blew up, and got a second one that blew up right away. At like 7,000 miles, and then this uh, this new one is hopefully the winner. Third time's the charm. Running best top on there. Uh, chopped the fenders. Welded up that bumper. Um, it's one of my buddies. Actually swapped in a Ford 8.8 .8 in there uh, with the Arctic 8.8 uh, .8 swap. Uh, three and a half inch dual rate coils. Uh, running 513 gears actually. It's my daily driver too. <laughs> um, what else? Slip yoke eliminator on there. Uh, Orn winch. I think I already said that. But yeah, coming at you from uh, Colorado. It's snowing, but you still, you know. Figured I'd make a video to share with you guys. Uh, cool story about this Jeep, though. I actually didn't plan on getting it. I really wanted it. Test drove it. The guy wanted, like, six grand for it. And he actually knew my grandma. And he, he recognized me at the funeral. And uh, he's like, hey, you know what? Tell you what, you're a family friend. Or I'm a family friend. And I've known your grandma for a while. So how about I cut you a deal? And ended up selling it to me for... I think four grand and that was about seven years ago and just been working on it ever since i've hit a lot of trails hit moab once really wish i could do moab again but you know social distancing cb radio uh, i actually got one of the rock hard four by four uh bolton roll cages on the way best part stormtrooper you can't go wrong there <laughs> uh one cool thing i wanted to show you before i go because, you know, you got to be unique. Everyone has a Jeep, so why not spruce some stuff up? I actually wired in an inverter. Uh, so now a grinder, a uh, laptop for videos and all that good stuff. I could all run that on on the road and when we're out camping and stuff and kind of go from there. And, uh, yeah, just wanted to share with you guys, let you know this is my build. And hopefully you guys like it. And uh, thanks for checking it out. Hopefully I get picked. Thanks, guys. Well, right on, Tim. What a great everyday man's build. I love how you have put that TJ together. And thanks for getting out there in the cold and filming that for us. I feel a little guilty because it's like 72 degrees here today. But look, uh, looking forward to some warmer weather up your way, man, so you can get out and hit those trails. Okay, the last one, we had to do a taco, at least one. Hey, guys. My name is Brendan. I'm up here in Burlington, Vermont. Uh, today, I'm going to be sharing with you my 2005 Toyota Tacoma TRD Off-Road. I picked up my Tacoma just about a year ago, and it actually had a lot of the mods that I'm going to be sharing with you today. Uh, so far, it's been really awesome, and it's given me the chance to get off-road. So I'm really looking forward to uh, this summer to get back out there on the trail. All right, so let's talk wheels and tires. I have a set of SCS F5 wheels. They are 16 by 8 with a minus 25 offset. I'm running Goodyear Wrangler Duratrax on them right now. They are 285, 75, 16s. 
So this is a 33 inch tire setup on this right now. So to accommodate the tires, I actually just recently swapped the suspension. It came with Toytec Boss coilovers, but unfortunately they were blown and they needed to be fixed. I opted for a set of ARB Old Man Emu Nitro Chargers with the 2886 springs up front. In the back, I have their Nitro Charger shocks as well um, with a one and a half inch block lift. For protection, the truck has an all pro front and rear bumper as well as front skid plate. I also have rock sliders. They're chipping from all the road salt they use here, but they're still fully functional. There's also two LED fog light replacements, a LED light bar, and a worn 10,000 pound synthetic winch up front. All right, so under the hood is a 1G RFE. That's the four liter V6. My Tacoma is an automatic, and even though I'm usually a manual guy, I've really enjoyed it so far. There's not really a lot to see under here other than the added Optima yellow top battery. That's the second one. Uh, there's also a fuse panel the prior owner put together to go with it. And also the winch controller has been relocated into the engine bay. Last but not least, I recently picked up a ranch bed cap. I scored this one actually from somebody right down the road. Perfect color match, great shape. Just have a full size spare in there, a gas can, and a high lift jack. My spare parts and tools usually sit back there as well, uh, but I actually have them out for the time being. Well guys, that about wraps it up for my truck. Nothing too crazy, but it's been a lot of fun to drive it, and even a lot of fun to work on it the past couple of weeks. I'm really excited to get back out in the woods this summer with it. This video ends up getting reposted. Brad, thank you. I really appreciate it. I love the videos, and I'm excited to see what everybody else has to share. Okay. Uh, right on. What a great Tacoma. It's well built. It's capable. It's clean. Thank you for your submission, and thanks, everybody, for all their submissions. It's been awesome checking out everybody's vehicles. Now, I'm only going to be able to select the ones that are, you know, they're interesting vehicles or they got a cool story behind them. And again, the audio the video, all that good stuff, no shakiness. It's gotta be good quality if you're gonna submit it and want them viewed here on the channel. I think we'll do this again. I had a lot of fun doing this. You let me know down in the comments below. Is this something you wanna see more often during this social distancing or maybe beyond that? I don't know, you tell me down below, guys. I had fun with this, I'm definitely gonna do it again. So if you haven't submitted your video, get them on over and I'll take a look and maybe, maybe yours will show up in the next video. All right, I hope you are all doing well and staying healthy out there. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.